today we will have a look at a very, 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 very interesting topic. In fact, um, today we will look at um, how to build a profitable FX trading strategy. In fact, um, a topic which is uh, not just on only um, FX related, but it, which is related to, in fact, all trading strategies, whether it comes to indices, gold or silver or Bitcoin, whatever. Um, it all comes down to uh, a build a profitable trading strategy, which you then trade consistently, uh, consist, con constantly and uh, try to capitalize on the given edge. But we want to here today focus on FX, in fact. And uh, what we will look at, in fact, are these points. Um, this is today's agenda. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to take a look back at a webinar, which we ran something like a year ago. So in fact, uh, it's uh, the birthday of Trading Spotlight. Um, so we, we are now here for one year, in fact, with all Trading Spotlight webinars um, together with Paul, together with Marcus and me. Um, and uh, I, I want to say thank you. Thank you very, very much that um, uh, you made this a success. Uh, it's not just Admiral who offers the opportunity here to provide all the content um, uh, to you as uh, um, yeah as the broker in the background, but it's also um, certainly you as the uh, guys viewing this on YouTube or here uh, live, asking all your questions and making this such a such a great uh, success for all of us. Um, and yeah, so if we want to take a look, um, or we will take a look back at the three columns of profitable trading, we made a topic already in one of the webinars within this series. And uh, then we want to also answer certainly the question why having an FX, uh, FX trading strategy is important. And um, then I'll guide you through questions you have to ask yourself, in fact, to find your personal FX trading strategy um, and which questions need to be answered in this context. And then we go through the plan. So this is just the, um, uh, um, uh, yeah, this is, this is the preparation for then using this knowledge and to build a profitable trading strategy, adapt this to a profitable trading strategy for FX, in fact. Um, so yeah, that's me. My name is Jens. I'm located in Berlin in Germany. And, uh, that's in fact, all I, I, um, I'd like to say because, uh, I am, there's plenty of information. An interview I gave um, around one year ago, in fact, and, um, and did together with Atma Markets. What's more interesting is certainly that I'm located in Berlin and Germany. Why is that the case? Because the broker behind this trading spotlight webinar series, Atma Markets, has offices around the globe, um, in fact, in over 20 countries. And not just that, but um, uh, has also an office here in Berlin, in Germany, in the capital of Germany. And uh, yeah, it's in fact known in Germany as the DAX expert. We refer among traders, in fact, also professional traders um, uh, to our markets in the CFD industry to uh, the DAX expert because um, it's most likely the most competitive offering in the um, 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 DAX environment you can get globally. But it's not just only on the DAX, the most com or a very competitive offering, but it also is on FX, today's topic. Um, check out uh, the, the website, abnormarkets.com for further information on that. And also, I highly recommend compare um, the offering from Admiral also in the FX environment here to other brokers. You will see that especially the average spread when you use external um, um, uh, websites like um, FX Blue, for example, um, they have a, um, a bro um, broker broker spread comparison tool, let's call this. So you can uh, you can add all brokers you want to have a look at there. Um, and then you can you can check the the spreads, the average spread, and you will see that Admiral is always among the tightest spreads in the FX universe. When it comes, at least when it comes down to EURUSD, it's it might be true also for other currency pairs. I haven't checked it, but on EURUSD, I can I can I guarantee you, I assure you that you will um, have difficulties find find a more competitive offering when it comes to the uh, spread here. So that's it on the introduction, and now let's remember the. First um, slide here, let's remember the three columns of profitable FX trading, in fact. And uh, those three columns were risk and money management, trading psychology, and a trading strategy with an edge. And these are the columns which profitable trading is built on. So um, I have um, already given an, an explanation why it's uh, not just, yeah, let's say, 
um, um, you won't get it done, uh, profitability in trading, if this is the overall target. And I, I, um, I'm quite sure that this is the case. Everyone wants to be a profitable trader in general, who's listening to that right now and trying to get input on this topic. Um, you won't make it to a profitable profitable trading approach or to be a profitable trader if you're just an expert on one of these columns because they strongly interact with each other. So risk and money management and trading psychology interact very, very strongly with each other and it becomes quite clear right at first glance because um, it should be clear risk and money management and the accurate position size has um, in this context um, um, uh, has an impact on your on your psychology. So accurate position size means that if you're going too big, it will certainly affect your behavior and let's um, increases chances of you getting emotional in your trading. Um, it's also true that risk of money management and trading with an edge here is um, um, strongly um, um, interacting with each other. How it comes? Well, very quite quite simple, I think. Um, also here, how, what's your edge and how big is your edge? In fact, so um, based on that, what's the curve position size? If your edge is um, quite huge, it should be clear that to uh, gain the most out of this edge, it certainly has to follow. Um, a more aggressive risk and money management approach. On the other hand, it should be clear if the edge is not that, that big, um, you should be quite careful when it comes to increase your position size, for example, um, just to make things easy and, and just roughly looking at this. And, and there's also certainly um, uh, a strong inter, um, um, interconnection between trading psychology and trading strategy with an edge. Why? Well, it should be clear that if you know you have an edge and you have um, a proven profitable trading strategy, it should be clear that this um, gives you mental stability in your trading. You know you can uh, trust your strategy and um, thus those two um, columns also strongly um, uh, play with each other and are strongly connected to each other, in fact. So um, you can already see that it's necessary to become profitable in your trading you need to be an expert on each of these three columns um, and then also become an expert on the um, interaction between the these three columns in fact and uh, so I I have already here um, I have already here um, um, I, I pointed this out already in fact so we go through this here once again um, um, how these how these um, uh, columns here interact with each other. So risk of money management and trading um, a profitable strategy is uh, going hand in hand with the question, as I already pointed out, what's your edge and that's that, what's the optimal position size in regard to your equity growth, um, but also when it comes to your mental stability. So in this context, for example, um, there's a formula. I, I'm quite sure I did also a webinar on this on the Kelly Criterion. Um, and uh, the, this, this formula gives you, um, uh, gives you an idea on what's the optimal position size in regard to the optimal growth of your equity curve, not looking at drawdowns. Um, and uh, the, the history of this, of this um, um, Kelly criterion is in fact based in gambling. And it also was introduced to the world of trading um, by hedge fund um, 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 traders like um, Ed Thorpe, for example. So um, probably you haven't heard about him, but you have seen the film 21 on accounting cards on the blackjack team from the MIT. The idea behind that um, is found in the book, which was uh, released from Thorpe in the 1960s, uh, Beat the Dealer. And uh, then he adapted this, and since he, yeah, became so sophisticated in in counting cards and then become a, 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 a profitable blackjack player, um, that uh, he he yeah had to switch casinos, let's say, and then he switched to um, uh, the stock market. In fact, so by the way, um, um don't don't um, misunderstand that. So uh, Ed Thorpe himself is um, a mathematician. So um, he started out his career in university, um, and became um. Um, excited about the question if there's a way to beat casinos or to beat um, games which are offered in casinos and this is how how this how this um, uh, yeah how he took on momentum in this um, in this in this area then and it spilled over to the financial markets and he's also one of the guys 
um, who introduced the concept of pair trading, for example, to uh, the trading world. So pair trading, this is like you are trading um, two so-called fungible um, goods like WTI oil and uh, Brent crude oil. You, you trade them against each other and um, you uh, use um, um, uh, at the, the, um, the so-called basis, I think we can call this probably. And if there's, uh, um, if there's for whatever reason, a stronger push in one asset over the other, even though they should um, uh, trade within a tight range, you can potentially profit from this with pair trading. And uh, he introduced this concept on other assets um, as well, using warrants, for example, and then um, shares um, or the underlying shares and, and trade it. Um, and based on that, he introduced or he used the, the Keller criterion to find out what's the optimal position size given the edge um, we, are, we are looking at here. Um, and uh, yeah, then it should be clear then uh, also when, when we look at risk money management and, and trading a profitable strategy, it should be clear that you want to get paid for all the pain you're taking by sitting in front of a screen and um, all the, the, the discipline and all the uh, pain you probably go through once you have a losing trade. Um, and, and all this it should be clear that if you're then in a winning trade, you want to be um, uh, paid well and um, uh, given your edge or based on your edge you have. Um, and that in mind then brings us to the strong connection between risk and money management and trading a profitable strategy. Um, we are here in, in this regard, by the way, focusing on uh, the uh, profitable trading strategy because this is exactly the column we want to look at in the following um, um, minutes here in regards to the FX strategy. And uh, trading psychology and, and having, having, having trust, trusting your, your strategy um, uh, is also a very important aspect. I, I just scratched it, um, uh, but let's, let's look at it, what's, what's quite common in fact, so-called strategy hopping, um, which results mainly out of the fact that the trader is not trusting the strategy, um, not really knowing what's behind it. And um, this is also something which I um, made an experience with over the years and when, when giving webinars. Um, I remember um, a series on, of webinars I did I, this years ago, but um, it, it was um, a series which um, aimed on trading the opening of US um, uh, markets in this case. And uh, I'm using an approach which I also um, uh, use in the uh, TradingStar community, by the way, um, um, which, you, which you can see and where I will post in around one hour from now. So the webinar is ended in there already. You will see the setup for today. It's a nearly quantitative approach. So you identify a range and based on um, how the S&P 500 in this case is trading in relation to the, to the, um, uh, to the EMA, in this case, EMA 10 and a moving average, um, you decide which breakout or which, which, which side of, of, of the range you just identified um, you, you will take. So if we trade above that, the um, intraday advantage in this case is long, is bullish. You trade the breakout on the upside. If it's be trading below this EMA 10 in this case, you're trading only short signals. And um, why is this important or interesting now? But because I, I ran this webinar and uh, that was a series which took something like months. It was six months or something, something like that. And I started out and we are only trading uh, the strategy once a week, was every Thursday. You present um, the, the strategy based on the market opening and then you, you trade it. Talk a little about developments, recent developments in markets, but this was the strategy we focused on and, and how we, how we um, build our live trading. The only problem was that you're only trading one day. Usually you're trading this every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you start over again, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. And um, now just imagine what happened was that people uh, joined the webinar, really it was, it was hundreds of people watching me trading the market opening because usually live trading is something which is um, making people excited, feeling excited. Well, I can, I can see a pro trading the markets and market opening there. Okay, so everyone's watching um, and uh, the trade is a losing trade. So it was stopped in and stopped out shortly after, in fact, was a, was a very spiky, um, a choppy price action. And this happened three, four times in a row. And as you may have guessed, uh, the number of attendees in the webinar dropped 
So people didn't listen to me anymore because they were just looking at this and just seeing that the trade was stopped out the fourth time in a row. And obviously the strategy is not making any money. What was kind of funny was that, again, it's an intraday trading setup. You trade every day. And after four weeks in this case, we were ahead with the strategy. But people surely didn't believe that. And uh, so why, why do I tell you that is because this is a perfect illustration on how psychology plays such an important role when it comes to having trust in your trading strategy, knowing what you're doing there. And um, so in this context, in fact, it's uh, um, very, very important to, to realize that this has also an impact on your, for example, motivation to follow someone who's sending signals out in the WhatsApp group, or you're um, becoming aware of a trading strategy which is offered for free, for example, in, an, in a Facebook ad or on Twitter or whatever. Well, it, it, it can be that this strategy is, is profitable. In fact, and, and in fact, you can, you can show this for a certain um, um, periods, sometimes for years, and, and, and um, um, the timeframes you look at here, the strategy is in fact profitable. But the fact that you haven't thought about the strategy yourself, you haven't built it yourself, makes it nearly impossible to follow the rules in a losing streak, during a losing streak, in fact, and, and, and trade through this losing streak with the um, consistency, which is, which is um, so important to um, capitalize on the advantage. Because you say, well, I skip the trades where you lose, and I'll be back then when, um, um, when the strategy performs well again. So I paper trades during losing streaks, and then I go back once uh, the, the equity uh, curve turns. I mean, this is a great idea, but based on my personal experience, I can say there were times when I traded the system, I continued to trade it, and there were days when I was nearly certain that the generated signal would never play out as I expected, um, and the strategy, the days sometimes were the most profitable in the year. Um, so I completely got it wrong um, on, on my, 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 my idea on the market for the day, which perfectly illustrates and underlines how important it is then to continue to trade, even though through losing streaks. You can certainly adapt and reduce the position size and everything. So there are certain um, important techniques, um, but all in all, it all comes down to, to psychology, in fact, and, and having trust in the strategy. So now you might wonder, which questions uh, do I have to answer um, or ask myself in fact, to uh, find my personal FX trading strategy. Um, so, and uh, it comes down to, I think it's, uh, it's my personal experience. It comes down to, in fact, um, seven questions you should ask yourself. So first of all, the first question you should ask yourself when uh, you're looking for your personal trading strategy, FX trading strategy, my, that self-explaining then what, how you want to answer it, but um, um, which market do you plan to trade? So you can see it here, which market means, do you plan to trade shares? Do you play to sh plan to share um, uh, trade indices, commodities, bonds, or, well, it's an FX trading strategy. So we, we already uh, found uh, the market we want to trade. Um, it's FX, it's Forex, okay? <clears throat> But why is it important to answer that question? Because this is also something which um, uh, corresponds with your personality in this um, um, aspect. So here, it in fact is um, is also mainly psychologically based. Um, why why you need to answer that question for you? Because these markets um, have certain characteristics characteristics attached to them. So let's have a look here at shares, for example. Um, if you trade shares you have so-called overnight gap risks. So, right, so which means you have a gap risk resulting out of the fact that um, um, the stock exchange is closed from uh, in Germany, um, Xetra trading, for example, takes place between 9 a.m. German time till 5.30 um, p.m. and then market is closed and reopens at 9 a.m. We all agree that there's uh, plenty of room now for things to happen. There could be a tsunami hitting um, um, for example, Japan, as it did in 2011 with uh, Fukushima, with a massive drop in equities back then. Um, there's also already before um, the um, 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 main trading hour in the U.S. equity markets. So there's a risk that the market um, opens significantly above or below um, 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 the closing price of the day before in your traded um, stock. So why is this important? Well, if you can't take this risk or if it makes you nervous and, and you don't feel comfortable uh, having this overnight risk or this, this gap risk, well, that means nothing more than it probably stock trading is not the right thing for you, or at least not as it is offered 
um, um, in, 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 your, in your trading platform, probably you need to probably look at indices in this case. And here at indices, which can be traded around the clock and where you have um, um, the gap risk um, here concentrated over the weekend, for example. Um, so that's one of the reasons why you have to, to really ask yourself, who am I to then answer these questions? Which market, for example, do I plan to trade? Despite the fact that indices like the DAX, for example, are very, sometimes very aggressive in their moves, very, very um, um, erratic sometimes. Uh, other indices like the S&P 500, for example, are more stable when they start to build a trend. The same is true when it comes in, in regards to the choppiness, when it comes to commodities. WTI, for example, oil futures sometimes have massive spikes on the up and on the downside, while FX is very smooth and, and very trend stable in this case, in fact. So um, then in addition to that, which products do I plan to trade? So what we plan to trade is certainly CFDs, respectively um, FX spot, which is also from a pure um, legal perspective, also considered the CFD here. But um, there's also other um, 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 markets or um, products you could take into account here, like um, leverage products as futures or uh, certificates or options or warrants or whatever. The thing is now um, also here, the question is, who am I? So why do I like to focus, for example, here on FX spot or CFDs in general, especially continuous contracts, because they have no expiration. Um, why is that of importance? Well, just imagine you're trading, for example, an option. You have an expiration date. So this is something you have to take into account um, once you formulate your trading strategy, despite the fact that it's not just the expiration and the time component, which plays a role here because the contract expires, but there's also um, a price component attached to this because now the option, let's imagine we are long a call, for example, has to trade above a certain price level, the so-called strike price. Um, it has to trade above that to make the bet profitable. In addition to that, you have a time component, which means you have to make sure that it trades above the strike price at a certain time uh, in the future. Plus, there's also the complexity, for example, when it comes to options, which it means when looking at the Greeks, for example, like Theta, Rho, um, um, Vega, for example, uh, Delta, Gamma, um, all these uh, um, components, they make this, this product all in all quite complex. You, or to put it differently, it will be of difficulty for you, especially if you're trading an OTC product here, to see whether this is the fair price you're getting there for your trade. So all this comes into play um, in regards to uh, um, answering the question, which products do you plan to trade? So you can see it's not easy to answer. So you really have to think about this. Um, and, and it is quite complex, in fact. And it's also, again, coming back to the strike price, uh, for example, from options and the time, um, um, respectively price and the time component to wonder, am I a guy who can take the stress resulting out of the fact that there is this um, time and this price component, or is it probably better to have a, let's call it true product to some extent, um, when we look at continuous contracts, which do not have this expiration component in it, and where the price is only based on the price I paid um, within my platform. is a transparent product, as uh, CFDs are in this case. So um, um, here, tracking the performance of the underlying um, asset in this case. Um, then also a very important question, uh, which trading approach do you plan to trade? So in this regard, for example, it becomes um, obvious that it's, it's necessary to also study the markets already and know what you're looking at here. You know, are you a trend trader? Are you trading the progression? Are you trading a regression, for example? Um, so to look at it from a... a price action perspective slash Dow theory perspective. Don't, we don't dig too deep into this now, but um, there's also um, where you can see you, you, you have to have a certain technical understanding of what's happening in the chart, what's happening in the order book, and then draw your consequences out of this. Um, also a question, very important, which time frame do I plan to trade? Why is this of importance? Just imagine where you're now completely hooked. You're, you're here for the first time. Uh, you heard about trading, um, I don't know where. Uh, you heard about a guy who made plenty of money trading stocks. Um, and uh, you say, well, this is exactly what I want to do. Yes, I have a job. And yes, I have to, to continue to go to the job to, to uh, feed my family until I make it then. But still... Um, I want to day trade um, the stock market or FX market or whatever market. Well, this is a great plan, but I just said you have a job. 
So it's your main source of income is resulting out of your nine to five job. Let it be a nine to five job. So does it make sense to now um, um, think about trading actively in and out um, um, during the day and having or being distracted um, from trading thanks to your job or put it differently or what would your boss most likely say if you trade your account, your personal account while having to uh, discuss um, 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 a business related uh, topic with your client, for example. So this is very important to answer. Which time frame do I plan to trade? Again, who am I? What's my current um, living situation? And based on that, um, is it okay to consider or it doesn't make sense to look at trading an m5 a five minute chart or is it probably better to have um, an end of day approach using end of day data um, which is looking at a higher time frame our um, um, four hour or daily chart for example it's also something where you can see that you have to ask yourself who am i first and then the question these are quite technical questions you have to answer then um, for yourself is what my trading logic looks like. So what's the setup? What, what do I want to see in case of a breakout trade when this and that level is broken after defining a range then I'm going long, going short. And uh, then sure, we also have to um, um, go through a back test. So you have the idea now. Now you have to see whether this worked in the past. Usually it's like you see a pattern, you test the pattern and then you see, okay, it worked here, let's say for the last 12 months. Let's now see how it played out over the last five years, probably the last 10 years, um, whether it was just a, a positive um, 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 a period for the strategy itself, like you're testing a trending approach and the market trended. Well, what do you think will most likely happen? You have a positive back test or a positive result when looking at the chart. But the more interesting question is, how did it perform during times of choppy price action, neutral price action, for example? And that's why a back test for a longer time span is important, which can only be run once you have formulated a clear plan, how to enter, how to exit the trade, how to manage the trade, certainly. And once you have the back test and the results look promising, then you have to start to think about conclusion. You can draw out of your first back test and optimizations, for example. What about potential drawdowns? Am I, am I, am I fine with taking a hit which could easily result in a range of around 20%. Given the um, um, results out of the back test, you run a Monte Carlo simulation, for example. You look at um, um, how the strategy performs under um, um, different, um, um, yeah, in fact, payouts, because you look at a um, so-called Bernoulli distributed Monte Carlo simulation here, where every one is a winning trade and every zero is a losing trade. And what you do when running your results through this and, and create different equity curves you try to find out how the strategy performed, in fact, um, once there is like 10 losing trades in a row, for example, and how big the drawdown could get and how this might affect you then mentally. This is, this is what you do here, and this is what you do in the last step in regards to optimize your, your approach. And um, so what we want to do now, after digging into this now quite deep already, but um, probably only from a theoretical perspective, we want to go through this now and formulate a profitable trading strategy and use an approach, which is quite easy. It's a, I can already say that it's a moving crossover system on, um, in this case, H1, so on the hourly chart. And we will use an information you can uh, get from the website on Atma Markets in regards to market sentiment, retail sentiment. But uh, before we start, first of all, let's go then through all these questions. So first question was, which market and which product do you plan to trade? These were the first two questions we already answered um, or to some extent at least so we said it will be FX in our case we will look at the euro USD in this case and then we will trade it with a continuous contract in this case a CFD um, then the question was which trading approach do we plan to trade and in fact when looking at the uh, strategy so I know this already beforehand now certainly um, based on my, my, my personal personality and, and, and based on, on um, all the thoughts I put into this. Um, it's, a, in fact, a strategy which, which I formulated um, several years ago already. So um, it's, it, it is a mixture between trend trading and momentum, tra momentum trading, in fact. So um, to, to probably give you a better idea on that, let me just um, give you an idea on what I look at. So it will be now very roughly... One sec. 
will be very roughly. So you have a trend and we agree on this, like a, a, a sequence of higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend. And so in this context now, um, we look at this trend approach. You already heard that I said, we will look at a moving crossover system. Moving crossover systems usually tend to perform quite well when it comes to um, um, uh, trends in general. So this is where the trend um, aspect comes into play. But still, um, given, given our, our um, um, entry logic into the trade, we are also looking at something we refer to as progression. So the progression is here. Um, these are the, uh, yeah, the progressive moves, while these bounces here are the so-called regression um, moves. And this is what we, what we look at. So we have a trend we look at, but also to some extent, some elements of a progressive trade or how you enter usually a progressive trade also in regards to the stop management then you will, um, you will, you will use when, when um, formulating the strategy. And uh, so this, is, this sounds now quite technical, um, but we know that what, what a progression is, okay? And this progression uh, should be clear that this, the length of this progressive um, a move here, that this depends on volatility. So the higher the volatility, the more likely the market will strongly move up or strongly move down in case of a downtrend. Um, and also, there's also a chance that the market will probably um, see a sharper bounce than in this case. So that, that for, for example, regressive moves are more aggressive in a more volatile market um, environment. And we will use this um, um, assumption in this case to say, okay, um, if the length of a progression um, depends on volatility, we will calculate our stop. Um, we will come, we'll come to this a little later based on volatility and plan to work with a preset RR of one to three, in fact. So RRR stands for risk reward ratio. So which means if one R, for example, is 50 pips, then our um, um, given um, or preset risk reward ratio of one to three says the risk is 50 pips based on volatility. So we'll aim um, on three times 50 pips or 150 pips. And uh, yeah, then we'll also look here at the time frame. So um, given my personal um, 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 situation back then, uh, it was that I had to trade in hourly chart. So I was in front of a screen because it was, it, it's, it's my job as an analyst, as a trader, to sit in front of a screen um, nearly every day. But still, um, I was not self-employed back then. So I was still employed, which meant that um, there was also some yeah, meetings you have with colleagues discussing projects or you had a client coming in and asking um, on his uh, position or educate him to some extent and, and give him a private coaching, whatever. So it was not possible to sit in front of the screen all the time, which meant that I um, decided to uh, use the time frame or to look for an approach which suits, um, in this case, a higher time frame. It's not 100% intraday based, and so we look here at an hourly um, 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 time frame. In fact, when remembering right the the back test results, um, this approach, which will be introduced in a few seconds here, um, is generating around one trade per per week. So. A, a quite, um, let's call it um, 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 low volume um, um, trade, um, um, frequent, yeah, low trade frequency. Uh, let's pro probably put it that way. And uh, now, now the technical thing starts a little. Um, not sure whether it makes sense to go in very depth here um, um, and now. So. SMA 20, SMA 50 is self-explaining. So we look, by the way, at the following here also on a chart in a few seconds. So don't, don't be, um, um, uh, um, or we, we will see a picture of that in a few seconds. Um, so we will use two moving averages, SMA 20, SMA 50, and uh, a crossover, and also the so-called retail sentiment as confirmation. So which means we don't dig too deep into this, but this is using um, a classic retail sentiment phenomenon, which results out of loss aversion, meaning letting uh, losing trades run for too long while cutting winning trades too short. And uh, so, which means that we usually use this um, retail sentiment in this context as a so-called contrarian indicator, meaning that if, for example, the retail sentiment is net short, we will take only long positions, while if it's net long, we will only take short positions. And uh, you can find this, by the way, on the website from Admiral Markets. 
here. I've already prepared this. You can see this, for example, right now here in red, you see the short positioning. Look at the chart. You will see there's a clear uptrend, which means contrarian indicator retail sentiment currently is playing out. So which means um, the 60% the, um, of, of traders here from upmarket markets in this case are Euro USD net short, meaning you should favor further gains in this case. And you can find this information here on the following uh, part of the website from Admiral. I will post it in the chat box. One second, please. Um, and let me just, there, let me just share it. And um, you will find it here below the analytics tab and their market sentiment. So um, right now to put this um, into our approach, we will only take um, bullish signals here. So we will only take long trades in this current environment, in fact. Um, since the retail sentiment is net short, meaning if now the crossover from the SMA 20 here from below to above the SMA 50 happens and the retail sentiment is net short, we have a long signal in this case. And uh, let me just go back to the presentation. And uh, now, now things are getting, uh, it's difficult to say ugly is probably a hard word to put this, but, but um, it's like, um, it's more difficult. It's very technical. It's very pathologic, pathological. So what I did is, in fact, I already talked about the volatility-based stop. Therefore, we use the ATR14, but we multiply it with the so-called EVZ. Um, the link here, you can also find it in the chat box. Um, EVZ is uh, a volatility index which is calculated based on futures volatility. So, which means that um, if volatility in the future market is high or priced higher than usual, you will then, for example, here see a Euro FX VIX of around 10 and even higher than that. So you can see, for example, if someone is talking about low volatility in FX markets, he will usually refer here to uh, um, um, this EVZ and then what options markets are pricing here. You see also once volatility picks up, as we saw during the Corona lockdown and, and US dollar demand shooting through the roof um, and, and the massive moves we saw in March and April in, in FX markets that it also resulted in volatility picking up. This is something which we should use as an information then for our a stop in this case. So if we use a volatility-based stop, we want to use a tighter stop in times of low volatility and we use a higher stop in times of higher volatility or a wider stop. So, and then I, I did the following. I went through this here and I said, if the EVZ is less than five, currently it's eight, you, you remember, we will see this, what this means then to the stop. We will multiply the ATR 14 with one. Um, if the Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is bad. This should be a um um. This should be different from that. Oh, this is this is not very cool. There's a mistake in the in the presentation. Uh, let me just let me just see whether I can fix this. Um, I'm sorry. That was that's a mistake at my end. Um, that's not very helpful. So EVZ is put it here. So if five. And then we have it greater five, but less than 10. We multiply the ATR with two as currently. And if the EVZ is greater 10, but less than 15, we multiply it with 2.5. So this is in fact, what's, what's happening here. Okay, so currently we are at eight, which means we are looking here at an ATR multiplied with two. So if I have a stop width of let's say 25 or ATR 14 is 25 pips, I have to multiply here um, my stop width then with two based on the current volatility so that the stop is 25 multiplied with two, so 50 pips. So, and uh, let me just then go through this quickly. Now, please ignore that. Just, just remember what I just um, adapted here in the in this slide. And the take profit is three R, which means if this is one R, then and um, let's say it's as I said, 50 pips. Then we have to multiply our risk with three in this case, so that we get 150 pips as a target. And uh, now, what I want to present here. This is not so. Um, um, uh, let's say, uh, yeah. How, how, can, how to say that? It's not so theoretical. It's it's a, it's a clear picture, self-explaining. So what do we have here? Well, what we see is there was the crossover 
Okay, it was a crossover taking place. Um, that's a chart which is already taken a while ago. I think it was September last year. Um, yeah, however. So um, still, what we have here is a crossover and this corresponded with the net short sentiment. So you don't take this crossover here um, from, from, from a long side. You, you're not trading it from a long side if the um, sentiment, retail sentiment is net long, because then we are only taking short trades. And since here, the blue line, the SMA 20 is crossing above the SMA 50 and the long signal is generated, we are not taking it. So both conditions have um, to be met so that we take the trade. And um, in this case, so it was given that, that the net um, uh, short sentiment was given so that we could take the trade. And uh, so we had the entry long generated at 09.75 and uh, we had an EVZ of seven. So we had to multiply our stop width then with two or the ATR 14 with two to get our stop level in fact. And since the ATR here was um, at six pips only, so it was very low volatile um, environment. You can see here the ATR, it's a very low volatile environment in which we, we found ourselves. Um, what we in fact did was we, we multiplied our six pips with two, um, getting to a stop level of only 12 pips and then having a take profit of 36 pips higher. So 12 multiplied with three is 36. You add this to the entry point at 0975. And uh, yeah, so in this case, that was a perfect play out market quickly moved in our direction, hit the take profit, it was perfect. But um, this is only one example. So based on, on, on seeing that in the chart, you may come to the conclusion, okay, probably there is something I can formulate the idea on. And so this is where the back test then comes into play. And this is um, where we ask ourselves, is this really profitable? And these are real back test results um, from a time span between 2010 and 2015. So some time ago, but um, I just want to, to show you the, the real backtest result I generated myself back then um, before I started um, trading this, this um, approach in, in the real world. And uh, these were the results I got. So I had 314 trades with a hit rate of 41.2%, um, meaning a loss rate of the um, um, counter result 588 a payoff ratio in this case, so average gain through average, um, uh, average loss of 2.35 to 1 with a max DD, in fact, of 5.2, which was very low. Um, so this is one point where Monte Carlo simulations come into play. So I had a very favorable environment, obviously. And so I put in these parameters into a Monte Carlo simulator and then saw what I had to expect in regards to a, um, um, a max DD in this case when uh, market conditions are not that positive anymore. And uh, so we have also the longest streak till we saw new equity highs, max winning trades in a row. We also have in this context um, um, at the end, the generated um, 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 gain or so the gain here, um, including commissions in fact, and that was the resulting um, equity curve. For whatever reason, there's this, this uh, black whatever. So usually you only have here the number of of dates most likely. Um, and that's why probably um, um, here Excel in this case made this back black, whatever. So, but this is the equity curve for this, for this, let's call it FX sentiment moving average system. And this is where sentiment MA comes from. And um, that's it in fact. So probably let's sum up what we just went through. So first of all, very important. That was, I, I think it became clear that having a concrete FX trading strategy is important, it's crucial um, since trading with a profitable strategy directly corresponds with the two other columns here of profitable trading, risk money management and trading psychology, which means nothing more than um, if, you, if you do not have um, here in this case, a profitable trading strategy or an idea or a clear result you can rely on, you will never find out if you have an edge and if you have an edge, then how to optimally capitalize it based on your knowledge in uh, risk money management terms, but also whether you can take uh, um, uh, the, for example, suggested position size um, in regards to your strategy and your edge from a trading psychological aspect. That's also true, not just on the upside and, and a too big position, but also on a too small position. Just imagine you have just a small edge and um, now you, you trade a strategy where you see your account not really growing because it's just a very small edge which plays out and, and probably 
causes gains of something like five to seven percent a year. Just imagine yourself sitting in front of a screen, uh, trading a one thousand euro account, and and just seeing a gain of five to seven percent, something like fifty to seventy year, um, euros per year you're making. Um, will this most likely affect you mentally? Some people will say yes, definitely, because this is not worth all the pain and all the time I put into trading this account, which will most likely result in emotional decisions you make because you say, well, now I have to see something moving here in the PNL. And then you start to increase the position size, which is then most likely causing tremendous and big losses, um, even though it's just a small account, but from a mental perspective, um, um, affecting your trading massively, in fact. So this is very, very important and, and perfectly illustrates why it's so important to ask yourself, who am I? And based on who am I, then what is the perfect trading approach for me and, 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 and fulfilling my needs and, and, and also um, um, yeah, being profitably traded, in fact. And the questions we want to go through then, if we want to formulate a profitable FX trading strategy are, which markets uh, do you plan to trade? FX, obviously, but you can also adapt this to every other market. Which products do you plan to trade? I highly recommend, given the less stress, you will have enough stress trading CFDs with a continuous contract, not having this expiration, everything, but don't um, um, focus on these products which have a time and, uh, and, uh, and the price component attached to it. So continuous contracts, let's call them true products, are um, very suitable for many, if not all investors or traders, in fact, and, and fulfill the needs of nearly everyone, which is one of the reasons why I will um, look at this um, um, in first place. Then also, which trading approach I plan to trade, in fact, um, and uh, then which time frame do you plan to trade, given your personal, um, um, given your personal um, um, living situation and was what your trading, lo trading logic looks like. You look at the chart, identify a pattern, and based on that, you try to formulate then your strategy, which you then run a back, back test through. And that's it. So don't forget to join us next time. Monday, Paul will tell you um, more on the topic on how to trade in bearish market conditions. Um, and uh, the, the uh, question he will answer here is how to define whether we're in a bull or a bear market, how should traders and investors adapt to the market conditions and the best way to engage with markets in bearish market conditions. Um, I can, by the way, say that Paul is um, a quite good bear. So in, in regards to trading, I have, I have um, um, heard that he is, he is uh, quite um, um, uh, confident in trading bear markets, in fact. So highly recommend joining uh, this webinar here. Monday, 2 p.m. London, 17th of August. And uh, for all these here right now listening to, um, uh, to this in real time and asking questions, then you will find the link in the um, inbox, in your inbox, in your email um, um, account. While um, if you watch this on YouTube, please leave a thumb up here if you just enjoyed what you just saw. Um, share the, the video, um, comment on it, um, ask your questions. I, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, and if you want to join live, then head over to atmarmarkets.com to the educations tab there, webinars, and there you can register for free for uh, the Trading Spotlight webinar series. And there's the website, atmarmarkets.com. Here is uh, the contact details. Here are the contact details for further questions, especially um, account-related questions. And here's the risk disclaimer. Happy trading. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week on Friday. I look forward to it. See you. Thank you.